So week two of making a dragon uh, in the style of how to train your dragon. Um, you can see in, in week one we had a good base mesh made very, very quickly. And now we're going to add all of these spines and all of the extra details like teeth and a tongue um, and a little bit more painting. So video two in this series, we're going to start doing the detailing now. So we're going to improve the body and we're going to work our way around putting things like spines on it and then start all of the detailing. So let's just work on the body a little bit more. So just make sure that I'm on the right color and I just want to make sure that we've got this shape around here is conforming to my ideal of of what I want for this for this creature. So the eyes, for example, um, I just didn't think that they were sitting in the head well. So I wanted them sitting up above like that. Um, so we use the move tool now on the, on the um, skin. We don't want it set to active layer only. We want it just for that one layer like so. And there you go. So it's got those goggly eyes more than, than the um, the sunken crocodile eyes that it, that it had. And this central horn here is gonna get a bit bigger like that and then smooth it down. So that's worked well. So back onto clay. Just add a little bit more detailing around that eye. I think it can go up a level now. So uh, in the first video we talked about the what level um, we should start at. And, and obviously we've got videos in our YouTube channel of. Of, of how you should start low if you're if you're blocking out and you should start high if you're going to do hard surface so have a think about that as you're as you're learning and trying to get your head around how low something is uh, i've just gone all the way through the mesh then i didn't mean to do that but what i'll do is i'll take it as an opportunity to carve out the mouth correctly like so so that's given me a bit more of, a, of a, the style I wanted on the head. Um, so I think the neck needs to thin down a little bit actually. So I'm gonna just bring it down like this. Because it is very stylized. So having that little thin chicken neck's not a major problem. I'll bring his belly down a bit there. The legs I was quite happy with overall, so I'll just smooth those nails down a little bit. Smooth the muscles at the back. And the tail wasn't too far off either, so back to clay. Just want to add a little bit of muscle definition down here. And now we're higher resolution, you can see that the you know when I'm smoothing it takes a lot longer. And that's a good thing because it's you know it means it's it's higher res now it's holding the shape a lot better. But we we got through that first video at those very low levels, which is which is what we want really. Let's just add a bit more definition on the wings, and then down his back, like so. And then down here. Same sort of thing, and that looks pretty good. So let's just help ourselves with a little bit of painting now. So we'll go to paint, and we'll paint that belly a nice cream color. That will definitely help us. So just come under here. I can't remember if the bottom jaw should be cream or not, but we'll leave it like that for now. Do the belly. I should come around there like that. And this will make it pop straight away, to be honest with you. So, come underneath the legs and then up the side. All the way down the tail. And remember, all of this painting does come out as vertex paint. So if you want to take this to another program like Blender, 
then the more paintwork you do in here, the, the better, because you can just take that and then work on it in your in your program of choice. I go to ZBrush a lot, and it just comes out as poly painting in there, so that's quite useful, I always find. Um, so that's given us a nice colour there. Let's go, I think the mouth is next, so we'll go like a dark purpley colour, and we'll get that in there straight away. And we might change all these towards the end, but for now, it's um, it's a good you know at least we've got some colour in there to to start working with. Um, and now we'll just hold down the green button and we'll adjust the opacity right down as we come round the edge here. And around the top edge up here, maybe a little bit too low. There. Bring the hardness down instead. There we go, you can see it looks, looks more like a character the minute you put those colours in, so I always, I always like to do that. We'll just put some a little bit of cream on here, so that's looking better already. Now, we need some spines on this thing, so the, the way we make spines is that we go ahead and make a stamp, so we need a new layer, so new layer. And it's very simple to, we, we don't need mirror, we just need to make one spine like this. Obviously, we want it to be a cream colour, and that's how we do it, as simple as that. But, let me show you, we can do it like this and smooth it down at one end. Or you could just go um, stroke taper, it will go scale. The stroke that we want will eventually give us there a nice stroke will give us the scale that we want and um, the spine that we want should I call it and then back with the red button and there you go there's our single spine so we're going to use that everywhere now so before we do do that I'll just smooth it down a little at the end and then I might paint it a little bit darker at both ends back to paint wasn't dark enough I hadn't moved at all so dark on the tip and then dark on the base as well all the way around and then what you can do as well you can pick the blue and you can add a little bit of blue at the base as well and that means you'll be able to sink it in and not worry too much about the, the edges blurring so right on the end there we could just do an inflate as well so bring it to the end and just inflate it a bit and what that means is that will fit in nicely now wherever wherever we put it like so so how do we use that as a spine? So you make that a individual, let me just adjust my headset, uh, make it a stamp there, and that's now a stamp. So we can, we're not doing this symmetrically, so we'll pop that one in there, and then again, move it around. So I'm holding down the um, thumbstick on the dominant hand, and that's allowing me to change the position. Now, do you see there, the mistake I always make is I leave it on continuous instead of single. So, let's just pop that in. And we'll pop in all of the spines that we want. And that little bit of blue at the bottom means that if I do happen to have a bit showing like that, it'll just blend it in nicely. That looks good on the head, quite happy with that. Now, on the back, on the tail, what I will do is, I will put mirror back on. And then, what we can do is, we can use mirror like this. Now, what I think's happened there is, we've reached the end of our voxel grid. So to solve that, what we have to do is go 
decrease the layer and that gives us a bit more working space so that last one that 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 we lost and now we can go a little bit further with it as you'll see and we don't lose any of the detail and there we go so I'm putting these a little bit random So, I'll put some down the spine, the spine's down the spine, and then turn the mirror off, and then do the individual ones. Like so. Now that wouldn't help with a rider, but I'm not massively worried about continuity with that. I just want it to look really cool. There we go. I think a couple more smaller ones on the front will help like that. Now, that instantly has given us a much nicer um, look all the way around. It's just brought that character to life. And one way to improve that as well is to have a look at the lights. So if you bring the lights down and move them around, you'll see that those spines casting those shadows really helps to make the character or creature pop so always be willing to move those lights around to have a have a look and move everything out of the way so you can see it too much when it's that close so yeah so you can have it something like that and it really casts nice shadows so you can see everything really clearly there now what we do need now is some teeth, so um, we'll go a new layer. I'll drop one of those spines in there. Um, I was going to use the spine actually and just chip off the end, but now I've looked at it, I don't think it's going to be big enough. Oh, no, I will actually. No, it will. It will be big enough. I was thinking that it might not be big enough right at the end. But if I do that, that'll leave it uh, a nice enough size. For the small ones and the big ones yeah and before we do it i will just paint that up a little bit more so back onto the yellowy color and i think i need more definitely more like a lighter color on the end of it there maybe not that much like that something like that and then make that a stamp and you can move that one in as the first one and this one we will do mirror on again And have we moved the mirror? Yeah, we have. We've actually moved the mirror plane. So I won't be mirroring that. I'll just undo that. And there you go. Now, if that's not, if that's pulling, not, not, not bent the right way. So what I mean by that is it's not got that curve in it. What you might want to do is go and make another um, tooth that, that suits the, the, the shape and the look that you want. But well, I'd be okay with that, I think. What we do need to be careful of is that it's not going through the bottom, which it's not. I was just wanting to have a look at that to make sure. So they look good. And we'll work upside down now. And some smaller ones. So that looks quite good. Let's add that tongue in while we're there. So go back to the sphere and we need to pick the color that we've currently got. And we'll just, we won't have, have it floating in the air. What we'll do is we'll have it like so. I'm gonna fill in underneath because I want to eventually 3D print. So don't want any airspace down underneath it causing me any problems later on we'll have it like a traditional tongue where it's got a, like our kind of tongue it's got that split in the middle like so there we go and we'll add a nice 
dark color around all the way around here like a dog if you notice a dog has this black line around the edge of its lips and when we do the final detail pass we'll clean that up even more Good. I think we've got the core of it down now. I think I'll add another light. And what we'll do is, we don't want it quite so close, but we'll change the colour of that to something like a, let me have a look. I think a red colour might be nice. Something like that. So it's got a bit of red coming through behind the wings. And there you go. As, as quickly as that, we're we're, we're on to we've we've finished the detailing. So that's added the spikes. We're just going to do a little bit more painting now, and then we're we're on to the final detailing section. Now let's just do the last little bits that we said we'd do. So um, paint the feet. Oh, we didn't put symmetry back on, did we? So, got to do both. Let's just do a little bit of clean up where we're seeing some errors. <laughs> put the lathe on there accidentally, it was quite funny. Um, Few more errors on the wings. Just a quick smooth will sort that out. We can delete a bit more of the end of the wings now. Because we've got now we can just do like that where we make it look much more jaggedy. And it may be towards the end that we combine the, the, the fingers and the skin. But for now that's looking good. Use a move tool on that and pull it down a bit. So I'm just doing fine little moves now. And the last video will cover a lot of this where we really go into, into detail. Um, adding the final look and the final... Um, surface detail as well we'll have a look at a little bit of a look at surface detail um, and that's when the, the thing will come together completely then um, but realistically I think that is enough that, that red light's a bit too much that looks like we've got the core of it down um, um, next week we'll just finish it with the detailing and maybe a bit of posing Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you're liking it. Please consider giving it a thumbs up if it's something that you enjoy watching. Um, we do do these videos every Wednesday and every Friday, both VR and for iPad sculpting, and soon we'll be moving on to our ZBrush videos. So if it's something that you're interested in and you're really enjoying looking at the, how we create stuff and teach you how to create stuff, then subscribe down below, hit the notification bell, and we'll let you know when the next video is out.